Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the uh, subject of today's video, uh, we're going to take a look at a case study for one of my clients. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, uh, welcome to Complexity Made Simple and the latest case study, part rationalization. Now this is a great case study to show you where lean, whoops, where lean and Six Sigma meet. Why they're both trying to do similar things. And essentially it is the removal of variability. In the word of lean, they talk about unevenness. They have a word for it, Japanese word, mura. Unevenness goes along with muda and muri, uh, which they also talk about in lean. But this just shows you that this, this simple project for me, it, it's all about 5S, but by the way, there, there are no cleaning routines here. This is work, proper workplace organization, workplace organization that makes money. Okay, so you're going to see 5S being used to get a process under control, which is its proper use, not to be cleaning up with it every week. So let's take a look at this thing. Okay, the current situation. Now, this is an ink. This is an ink manufacturing company. And uh, currently, it says they have... 380 pots on site and they use these things to mix the ink in and they're all various sizes uh, I think the ink gets mixed in a pressurized situation so they have to be inspected they also have to be maintained they've got wheels on the bottom um, they've got wheels on the bottom and that's part of the way that the uh, the process works so there's certain things that have to work properly in order for them the mixing to take place correctly but currently they have 380 pots they're all spread all over the factory um, as they're saying here look pots are stored everywhere they don't know where they are uh, when they come to clean them or maintain them they have to go and find them so there's lots of searching time and all sorts of things going on so lots of lost uh, capacity and um, it's quite a difficult thing to, to manage and maintain so here's a picture. Um, here's a picture of the the pots. You can see. Let me see that kind of uh, this thing's kind of a little bit inky and dirty, but uh, that's just an example of uh, one of the pots right there. And, th and they are all uh, different sizes. Um, you can see that they're machine washed, as it's saying here, and washed out with a solvent. Uh, and there's also these these kind of things, the valves and all the fittings are. Are maintained as well so um, it's a it's a fairly involved little little process and you don't want to be wasting time uh, doing it so here's the team the, the guy that's going to do the work actually the, the guy whose project this is is Lee there so uh, Lee Lee Hook um, yeah they all do look like they've been arrested for something don't they on that uh, photo <laughs> but uh, that's the team that's the team that took part in this project anyway and okay, we, we're going to do something just very basic. We, we are going to identify variability. So what Lee is doing here, he, he's using a cause and effect diagram and he's looking at the variables in the process. Now this is a very, very powerful way to look at a process. In fact, he's looking at the input variables. And what we're simply going to do, we are going to remove the variability. We are going to remove unevenness, as you might say, in lean. And, and that's all he's going to do. Um, and, and the process, I mean, we, we haven't got the results here because this is, this is a process that clearly is, is going to go on for the next three, five years, and they will see how much time they save, how much better they do maintenance, 
Um, and part of it as well was removing unnecessary pots from the system. So they've really created a system that should work better, that will allow them to manage the pots better. They won't really see the, the payoff for a year or two yet. So there's all the variables in the in the process. Let's let's take a look at what was concerning him. So the first thing he, he identified is the fact that they had, I think he said to me, three different ways of identifying the pot. Um, so you can see there's, there's barcodes, there's tags. Um, some of them don't have any information at all. Um, but, but there are the variables, different ways of identifying the, um, different way of identifying the, the pots. What else has he got? So uh, here's, his, here's his identification sheets. And there's also a maintenance, so there's an asset number. Let's put, let's put a third thing in there. He hasn't put that on the cause and effect diagram. But you can identify the pot as a tag. You can identify it as a barcode. You can identify it as an asset number. Could we think of any more ways to identify the same piece of equipment? And all three get used. Um, consequently, as he mentions here, look, when you get variability, what do you get? In the words of Six Sigma, we get chaos. We want to go from chaos to control. And then over the next year or so, Lee will be able to take this process to excellence. Okay, so first thing he's got to do, sort out the identification system. And now he's created a new label. So as you can see, look, no tags, no barcodes, one pot, one number. Yeah, it's it's kind of simple stuff. It's 5S, isn't it? It, it really is just 5S. But it's a great, 5S is a great technique for getting a process under control. That's why we love it in Six Sigma. And then he also creates at the same time a location for it. And he's got some information that goes with it. So the pot size. Um, so he's, he's just creating great workplace organization. That's all this is about. So we're just going through some examples of what he's doing. Um, so process flow. Now this, this is the process by which he's correcting everything. Because obviously he's got 380 pots. There's, there's 380 pots spread all over the factory at the moment. They all have to be correctly identified and changed. So he's just telling us what the process is going to be. And really what he's going to do is he's going to do this. As each part is picked to be maintained, he will um, re-identify it, give it a location, and generally just tidy the process up almost a pot, almost a pot at a time. So going back to his cause and effect diagram then what's the next thing he's looking at? Now the next thing that was variables, look, was this thing right here. They had several different ways, several different maintenance periods. So some pots were done every six months, some 12, some 24. Nobody knew why. Nobody knew why those three periods existed. They were just there. Not simple. Let's change it. It's not difficult, rather. Let's change it. So here we go. It's just identifying that look. So obviously each... Each pot's got its own check date. It's got these different flipping routines here. Um, pots are taking around 15 minutes, 15 minutes to check. But here's the thing, look. We're going to go search for it um, by up to 30 minutes. Um, and this is a health and safety requirement. Yeah, this isn't just about the performance of the, of the equipment. Although it is about the performance of the equipment, it's also a health and safety issue. So... You know, if one of these pots gets gets missed and a problem occurs, this is a, you know, this is um, potentially quite a dangerous situation. You never want to be compromising on something that's related to safety. So they're going to get this process. Uh, let's get this thing under control. Let's get it, let's get it all correct. Now then. One of the issues with that six month, the six month, the 12 month, the 24 month period is that the, the pot maintenance workload 
was all over the show. And here's three separate weeks where they did pot maintenance. And you can see, look, some days they don't know anything because they're not due. Some days they do one. Then all of a sudden, flip my neck. And it's a Friday. It's called for 10 to be maintained on that day. Now you imagine trying to manage your maintenance resources with all this variability going on. You can't find the pots. The pots come at you different quantities on different days. You never know whether it's going to take you 30 minutes to find the pot or not. Uh, you can see, look, here's all, the, here's all the pot searching that went on, look. Yeah, so double. Essentially, we're doubling the time here to go look for the pots. And as I say, you've got all this workload that you're trying to manage and understand whether you've got free maintenance people and all sorts. It's just not great. One of the great things about Lean, and it makes you do this about demand patterns, it makes you flatten demand patterns. Because if you flatten demand patterns, take the variability out of it, as Six Sigma would say, you create a simple system that's easy to manage. Here we go, oh, look, oh look at that. Let's, let's flatten the demand pad. So now look, we're straight away. We know we're gonna spend an hour and 15 minutes. It seems that at the moment, it's taking 50 minutes to find the pots. Much better than what it was taking before. Still not brilliant, but um, we've got pot location information. Uh, but as it says there, we're, we're saving 10 minutes a pot. Um, so, you know, this is the, this is the current proposal. Um, and if we've got 380 pots, we've got to do two pots a day. And, and that's the way that we're going to do this. And, and then you can manage the resources so much easily. Okay, now then. Next thing we're looking at. How many times does a pot get washed? So we're talking now about things like usage, essentially, of the pot. In other words, do we actually need 380 of them? Because we've never identified them properly and we don't know where to find them and all sorts of things, um, we never really understood whether the 380 are really in, in process are needed or not. So we've probably got pots that we don't need. We're probably doing maintenance on pots that probably haven't been used, all sorts of things. Um, so lots of wasted time as well. So now we're going to create, number one, we're going to create a location. We're going to create a proper number for it. We've got some information that tells you the pot size, so when you go find it, you'll know you've found the right pot, just in case there's a problem, perhaps, with the identification. We can also create a 12 monthly checklist um, that tells you two pots a day and you can just work your way through the list from one to 380, very straightforward. There's also a tally chart. So what this is going to do, look, it's, a little five, it's going to be a little five bar gate. How many times does the pot get washed? In other words, how many times are we using this thing? They're going to collect two months of data before we make any decisions about rationalizing pots. So, you know, part of what they're doing here is setting up a system that enables them to rationalize pots and take pots out of the system that they don't want. They can sell the, the pot for scrap, potentially. Uh, they can spot if a particular size of pot is being overused and maybe introduce um, more stock, more resource where it's needed. So they'll, they'll be able to understand what's going on. And here's the system in progress, look. So you can see, happy happy maintenance man here. And uh, there's the simple visual management that's going on behind him. You can see they've done a fair bit of work here. Pots have got, uh, pots have got washed and maintained. Um, so a little bit of a... Um, little bit of a close-up the one thing that I would say that would be better is the due date here so a better thing would be a column with due date 
and then next to it, the date checked. And, and I, I probably what I would do actually is rather than maybe go one to 380, I would probably put it in due date order. And then the person can look and say, okay, these two pots are due today. Where are they? And go, go find them, do the work. Um, so I probably would put the due date on there because then what you've got is when you look at this thing, you've got nice, nice visual management. So when somebody looks down the list, they can find today's date. And if, if we haven't maintained what's, what's due today, we have an issue. We can decide we've got a problem and put it right. So um, nice bit of visual management there. If we put the due date, I would personally put the due date on there and put it in due date order to make it easy to do. But um, hey, the, the, the starting this off, this is a great, it's a great improvement on what they were doing. And there's a little tally chart look as well, telling them the usage. So you can see that some of the 70s, not sure what size the 70s are, but uh, they're getting a, they're getting an awful lot of work by the look of it because they're getting washed um, on a pretty regular, on a pretty regular basis. So three months worth of data. They started looking then how many times that um, pots were being washed. Um, I've got the information. Since then, look, two pots have been scrapped. 264, 265 have gone. They've decided that they weren't being used at all, didn't need to be in the system. Uh, there'll be others probably that will, that will go. But now they're in control of the process. Now, of course, what we're doing, I would call this, this is, this is your red tagging process, isn't it? So if we, go, if we go 5S, they are red tagging the items now. I think they actually use blue tags. There they are. So here's the blue tag. Um, I would call it a red tag process. It doesn't really matter what color it is, as long as everybody knows what we're doing. Um, so, um, and, and these, these pots, look, this is part of the process. These have been, uh, four pots have been tagged uh, for a one month period just to check how often they get used. And uh, if, if they don't get used, these guys are going. So just simple. This, this was a, a simple thing. It just got the variables under control. I got the team leader. I got Lee to think about just the little pieces of what goes on, the labeling, the routines, the, the periods, the way that you display the information so that everybody can see what's going on, etc. It's just a simple set of variables. And, and all we did was we just used 5S. I don't like the word 5S. I prefer to use the phrase workplace organization because you could see from this project that was exactly what Lee did. Just organize the workplace. That's what 5S is. You'll notice there's no brushes involved. There's no cleaning up going on here. This is 5S, folks. Uh, 5S at its best. It's being used to get a process under control and make money. Well, I hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, if you've got any questions about that topic, or indeed anything to do with Six Sigma, or Lean for that matter, give me a call and I hope to hear from you soon.